Peace, family. Kings, queens, gods, and goddesses, and everything in between. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Crystal Healing. I am your host, Crystal Heal. Uh, tonight, or this evening rather, I want to talk to you guys about um, the practical meaning of what it, a practical look, a practical example of what it means to be born again. Now, I put as the title of this audio, a non-Christian look. And the reason I did that is because uh, normally we associate being born again as a Christian ideology. Uh, but I want to take you out of that mind frame and show you a practical, natural illustration of exactly what it means to be born again. Now, I'm going to say this, that um, the principle of being born again is not a predominantly Christian idea. It is a universal idea. Uh, it displays a process through which one's mind has to go through in order to uh, basically ascend or evolve. And so we're going to take a deeper look at that um, again, as I said, in a non-Christian type viewpoint. Uh, that way you can better understand the concept. So continuing on, let's jump right into it. I have put before you as a picture of this gaudio, the growth stages of a butterfly. There's a reason why we always talk about in the so-called conscious community, uh, you know, there's conversations that are caterpillar conversations, caterpillar type knowledge, but then there's also the butterfly kind of conversations and the butterfly kind of knowledges. And so that in itself displays that there are, are two different mind frames or mindsets operating in this realm. You got the caterpillars and you got the butterflies. Now, Let's get a little bit deeper. Y'all heard me talk about religion. Now, if you've listened to me quite a bit, then you know that I have no qualms with religion. The only qualms I have with religion is that people get trapped into religion like a coffin. OK, religion is absolutely necessary here. Again, I don't eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. I see it only as life. So religion is just as important as spirituality, but in its own place and in its own time, there's a time and a place for all things. Let me cut my uh, volume off here. So I don't be disturbed doing this gaudio. OK, done. Religion is not bad. As I've always said, different people are different levels. There's levels to this. You understand? And so when you find people in religion, I want you to understand that that's just like looking at uh, 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 the egg here to the far left. You see, it says number one, because that's the first stage we are in. Religion is a, a, a house that is given to you by your parents or someone uh, who is designed to give you that structure in order for your spirit to express itself through. Religion is given to, to children as a protective covering over one's mind. You understand? And we, when we first receive religion, we grow in the religion, not outside of the religion, our mind grows within the religion, but something happens along the way. Now, for a lot of people, this happened uh, in December of 2012. OK, so we can we can safely say that for Mother Earth herself, Mother Earth uh, in her sentient beingness was encased in religion, evidenced by the fact that all of the cells, a.k.a. us, within her body were encased in religion. But something happened in December of 2012 where we began to poke outside of the egg that we were so carefully encased in. OK, but I want what I want you to understand is this is a natural process. Peace, sis, Stephanie, Joseph Whitefield, Whitfield, excuse me, Brandon Jones, peace, Angel, J.D., my cousin, peace, peace. Thank you all for tuning in and all else who I didn't uh, call out. Thank you all. 
Now, in 2012, we began to peek out of the egg of religion that we have been carefully cased in. I want you to understand that religion is not bad. You understand? In the same way that an egg protecting the fetus inside the egg is not bad. It serves its purpose. There's nothing here without purpose. All things were created by and for a purpose. So to religion. Now, the problem that I've been having with religion recently, however, is that they have made the egg so hard, the egg of religion so hard that some of the more feeble spirits are having a hard time uh, 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 busting through that shell. You understand? So some people are dying in religion as a fetus would die in its egg when it is too weak to poke out. So as the scripture says, you know, the, the, the field is white, but the workers are few. You understand? And so we need people out in the field who are going to strengthen the feeble spirits that give them what they need in order to poke out of this egg of religion that you were meticulously placed in. Now, I want you to notice something else. As we see on the picture of this Gaudio, number one, the egg that the, the caterpillar was initially in was not created by itself. It was created by a being outside of itself. And in the same way, the religion that you start off with has nothing to do with you. You had nothing to do with creating it and any of its tenets. But you found yourself caught in it. Now, so... I am confident that most of the people who are listening to my voice are those people who've popped out of the egg of religion and have moved on to stage two, which happens to be the lava stage. Now, I want you all to be aware that at stage two, this is the most dangerous stage in your spiritual growth. Understand now what I have displayed before you as the pictures of this Gaudio is 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 showing you your mind, the the fetus within the egg is your mind. The larva is your mind. The pupa is your mind. And so too is the butterfly. So we're talking about the mind here. I want to be very clear on that. You understand? So your mind is initially encased in religion around uh, December 2012. For some people, it was uh, later and some people sooner. They popped out of this egg of religion and they began to see the world in all of its beauty with its color, its vibrant, its its death and, 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 and different aspects that they never had seen before. And they left the religion laying down, cracked open on the forest floor somewhere. Now, we're at the larva stage for the most part. Most people I've noticed are at the larva stage where they've dropped the ego. They've dropped the religion and they're living in their pure spirituality. Hmm? But I want you to understand that this is the most dangerous stage in the game. See, caterpillars are without that protection. You know how they say live in the now? And caterp- caterpillars are more so those kind of beings that live in the now. It's a very dangerous time because there are a lot of beings who uh, have wings, birds and such, who have evolved themselves, but they're, they're not um, good-hearted beings, let's put it that way. And they want to eat the caterpillar. So you got to be very, very careful in this stage of the game. But what I want to talk about is, is, is stage three. This is, this is the crux of what I want to relate to you today is stage three. I want you to know that at some point in the journey that you're going to have to go back into religion. I know that's hard. <laughs> I know that's hard for a lot of people to accept that. And you don't have to if you don't want to, but you will eventually. Because if you don't, if you don't, you will stunt your growth. You cannot ascend until you die. Do you understand? You got to die in order to be reborn. Now, what does that mean practically, Crystal? That means that you got to rewrap yourself in the religion If you studied etymology, you know that religion means the binding back of your consciousness, the binding back of spirit. And that's what an egg does. That's what a chrysalis and a cocoon does. It binds back your spirit. That's what religion does. But you, 
unlike the first time you was in religion, you are going to have to uh, construct a religion of your own in which to bury yourself in like a seed. Hmm? The first time the religion that you received, you received from outside of yourself, usually from your parents or your guardian. But you see, the second death or the second religion that you got to go into, you got to willingly go into it and you got to create it yourself. Now, see, the whole Jesus story is symbolic of this shit right here, this shit right here. You see, if you look at number one, this is the point where Jesus was born and said he grew and he was in the temple asking them questions and he was growing in wisdom and statue, the, the scripture says. But at some point, at some point, he bust out of the old religion. You understand? That's when they didn't like him no more because he was no longer in the egg now. You see, he was freed at that point. He said, I wasn't made for the laws. The laws was made for me. But then you see, there's something else that happened. Something else that happens. In the same way it happens for a butterfly. Have you ever heard that right after after the whole little issue with Jesus having with the Pharisees and the Sadducees, he went into uh, uh, the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights and he didn't eat. I want you to understand that in the life of a butterfly, what happens is it stops eating. It stops eating and then it finds a tree. Cursed is any man that hangeth from a tree. It finds a tree and it hangs itself upside down on that tree. And then what it begins to do is it begins to deny itself or kill its own self. It eats its own flesh. Mm -hmm. Yes, it does. But for a purpose. Hmm? Sometimes you got to deny yourself, but for a purpose. You understand it eats its own body. And so mentally speaking, since we are talking about the mind, what happens is, is you begin to break down what you think you thought you knew. You understand? You begin to break that down, your belief system that you have carefully constructed for yourself. You break it down and suck it back in. You understand? Mm hmm. And so but what happens after that? See, see, in the Jesus story, it, it said like this. See, Jesus resurrected on the third day, leaving, leaving the linen behind. And so, too, when the butterfly resurrects itself, it leaves the cocoon or the chrysalis behind in the same way that even though you do have to construct your own religion, so therefore you have to willingly go into religion, have to willingly go into death. Mm hmm. That's right. But you don't stay there. You don't stay there. Eventually you gain your wings. Now, what's the difference between a butterfly and a caterpillar? You see, there are two different same being, but two different beings at the same time. See, the caterpillar is constricted. It is limited to the tree. It cannot go beyond the surface level, period. It cannot. And so what I'm, I said that to say this, I understand that you've popped out of religion and I understand that you're you're basking in your free spirituality, but you're not done yet, baby. Don't stop there. There is more to the story, to your story. Hmm? more to the story. You got to willingly, willingly give up your life. Hmm? Grasp what I'm saying mystically. You have to willingly put yourself back in a religion, but not a religion constructed outside of you, a religion constructed by you in the same way that the larva or the caterpillar constructs its own coffin now. It don't have the coffin that mama gave it. It constructs its own coffin and it willingly goes into that coffin for a purpose. Hmm? And that purpose is to reconstruct itself and to gain its freedom, its true wings, so that it can fly the depths of consciousness, no matter how high and how low. There it can go. So. To the people at the sound of my voice, you were drawn here by a, for a reason. Nothing is by accident. 
Nothing is by coincidence. Everything is sacred synchronicity. And so if you are listening to the sound of my voice right now, that leads me to believe that you are one of those people who are in stage number two and you are afraid to go into stage number three. You told yourself you wasn't going to mess with religion no more because you realized that religion was death. You realized that religion was a coffin. And indeed it is. Indeed it is. But for a good purpose. Everything has a purpose. And so you don't want to go on to stage three because you're scared, you're nervous, you're a little leery of religion at this point in time. But what I want to tell you is press on, my child, to bigger and better futures. You understand? Press on to more expansion of your mind and of your spirit. And by and by putting yourself in your self-constructed religion is the only way you have to willingly give up your life. Like Jesus said, no man taketh my life. I lay it down of myself so that I can pick it back up again. And you've got to do the same thing. Hmm? You got to do the same thing. If you're a caterpillar and you want to become a butterfly. Now, if you find being a caterpillar, that's fine with me. But I am, I, I am convinced that I'm not talking to people who are comfortable with being caterpillars, but people who truly desire to become the butterfly. Hmm? I want you to know that religion is not the bad guy here. The only time that religion is the bad guy is when you get caught in that coffin and you can't come out. When you think that the coffin is the end all to be all, you die in that coffin. Hmm? When you get old enough, when you get big enough and you get strong enough, it is designed by nature for you to pop out of religion. Yes. But as everything in life, there are cycles here. You know, you awake and then you sleep. You awake and then you sleep. So too, like, like days of our lives says, like sands in the hourglass, so are the days of our lives. How does sand in the hourglass go? It's on one side. You turn the tables like Jesus did in the temple. Okay. The tables always get turned. And then what was on top becomes that which is on the bottom. You understand? Sleep, wake, sleep, wake, night, day, night, day, embodied, disembodied, embodied, disembodied. You see? And so in the same way, this is where we get the sacred name of God. Yud, hey, vav, hey. You ever heard of that? Yud, hey, vav, hey. Hmm? Yud, hey, vav, hey. Now, let me tell you a little secret. The Hebrews read from right to left. So if you look at the picture I've displayed before you, I want you to know that the adult butterfly there, the adult butterfly is Yud. Okay? Read from right to left. Yud, hey. Hey is religion. Vav, and then hey again. You see the cycle? Yud, hey, vav, hey. You understand? Night, day, night, day. Yud, hey, vav, hey. It's the four. Everything, if, if, you, if you really are uh, observant, you'll realize that there's fours repeating. This is a septenary here, but four is another major number. There's four seasons, four chambers of the heart. There's four brains. You understand? There's four stages of growth. Four, four, four. And so that's what that is exemplifying here. Now, let me tell you something else. The scripture says that uh, in order to see the kingdom of heaven, you must be born of water. But in order to enter the kingdom of heaven, you must be born of the spirit. Now, let me use this picture to help you understand that. You see, when you came out of your mother's womb, you came down the birth canal. OK, a canal, the birth canal and her water broke. You were swimming in water. That's your first birth. You understand? And so when you're first born here, you're born of the water automatically. That's off top. And you can see the kingdom of heaven in the same way that a caterpillar, it can see the sky from the branch on which it perches. You understand? It could do that automatically by just popping out of the egg. But in order for the caterpillar to be able to enter the sky and to be able to fly around in the beauties of heaven, it must be born again. And therefore, it must wrap itself by its own self, by, by its own merit, 
into a chrysalis or a cocoon, a death, a religion, a coffin, willingly. Why? Just for the purpose so that it can enter in to the kingdom of heaven. Now, speaking with the mind, what does it have to do with the mind? You understand there's two different type of mindsets. One mindset is ground to the to the surface. It's ground to just what it sees. It don't see behind the scenes, the fourth dimension. It don't have a bird's eye view. You ever heard the saying you can't see the forest for the trees? But if you want to truly see the forest, you got to mount up with wings like eagle and look from a sky. You understand? You got to get a bird's eye view to really, really grasp the bigger picture. And so there are so many minds out here that are like caterpillars. They can't see the forest for the trees. They really can't see the bigger picture. Hmm? And I want to teach you what nature taught me, hmm? which is the way the cycles of life go. Yud, hey, vav, hey, growth and ascension and expanding. You understand? Do you want to gain your, your spiritual wings, your mental wings? Hmm? Where you can fly about consciousness as you will to get a bigger perspective, a bigger view of your world and your reality where you have got to put yourself back in a religion. But listen, Listen, don't be afraid of religion. The religion that you was in at, at first, I know it's scary because you almost got trapped in it. Yes, and it was difficult poking yourself out. You see, it's, it's hard coming out. It really is. The bright lights all in your eyes and shit. You can't barely see when you first come out. You're almost blind. You really are. But slowly you began to develop your your true spiritual sight. So it's a scary process being born. This is why when babies are born, they initially cry because it's a scary process. You went from the warmth and the covering of your mother's womb. You understand? And religion is like a womb for us. Mm? It's warm and it's comfortable. It's what we know. And it's hard when you come out of that. It's hard. It's a very hard process. Anybody that's ever done it can tell you it's no easy task. Hmm? But my child, you got to put yourself back in. But don't worry this time. This time you create the religion. You understand? I understand. I see. I see how we go about from Facebook preacher and, and, and all we, we collect in all kind of materials from all kind of places. But what you need to do with those materials is carefully construct yourself a belief system in which you can reside in. Do you understand? Not the one that was given to you, but the one that you create according to your nature and the God that resides within you. Hmm? And then you go in it. But you only go in it for a while, just like you go to sleep, you see. But you only go to sleep for a while. You got to wake up at some point. Hmm? And you go in it and you willfully, willfully die. Hmm? You got to die before you die so that you don't die. Grasp that shit. You got to die before you die so that you don't die. See, he who experiences uh, 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 the first death won't be hurt by the second death grasp what I'm saying. He who experiences the first death will not be hurt by the second death. What is the first death? The first death you actually, actually experience is coming out of the water. Hmm? Yes. Angel says it's no joke. <laughs> I like that bird's eye. And that's exactly what it is, Angel. Bird's eye view. You got to get you got to earn your wings, but you can't earn your wings. But through death, I know people don't like to hear that you cannot earn your wings, but through death. But we are so afraid of religion because we have looked back uh, into our history and seen the lower levelness of religion and how it bind back our spirit. And we don't want to get back in the coffin. You understand? Hmm. We don't want to get back in the coffin. Like a lot of people say, they don't want to reincarnate back here. They don't want to get back in the body. They want to be free and just be a pure spirit, being able to go where they want it. They don't want to get back in the body. Hmm? 
And in the same way, a lot of us don't want to go back into religion. But this time you construct your own religion, just like the caterpillar. He's this time he constructs his own cocoon, his own chrysalis and willfully puts himself in it. Then he absorbs his old body. What does that mean? That means you got to let go of your old thoughts. Hmm? As pure and wonderful and as divine as they may have been. You have got to let them go. You got to get rid of the old to bring in the new. Hmm? And so what the butterfly does is it stops eating. And it finds it's a tree. And it hangs itself upside down. Hmm? And then it begins to carefully reconstruct its new spiritual body. And you must do the same thing. Hmm? Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Hmm? Conforming is staying a caterpillar because you're too afraid to get into the chrysalis. You're too afraid to get into the cocoon. But I'm here to send you a message, which is an old message, but yet a new message. Hmm? Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Baby, keep going. Keep going. There's nothing to fear but fear itself. It's all a natural process. Now, I want you to know something else. Be very careful at this stage of the game because, see, when you're a caterpillar, you have a lot of people come to you. <coughs> Excuse me. And they'll tell you, look, listen, listen, you're too dumb to make your own religion. You don't have enough <clears throat> consciousness to know what's right and wrong to make your own chrysalis, to make your own cocoon for your spirit to express itself and reside through. So why don't you just hand over your mind to me and, and look, I'm going to make a chrysalis for you because see, I got all the knowledge. I got all the wisdom. I'm going to make I'm going to make a religion. Just, just jump in my religion. Don't make one of your own. Don't make it according to the compass, your internal compass and your God. Just take the one that I have already uh, carefully crafted for you. It's perfect. I'm telling you, I went in it. And look at me. I came out a butterfly. You go in it and you'll come out a butterfly. And I'm here to tell you that's a fucking trap. That is a trap. You never, ever, ever in nature see some other butterfly making a chrysalis or cocoon for a caterpillar. He makes his own cocoon and his own chrysalis. Do you understand? What's, what they're really saying is they're trying to take you back to stage one. Yeah, it's called, it's called, what, what they call that in the Christian church? Backsliding. <laughs> That's what they call that, backsliding. When you want another man to make your religion, your coffin for you. And not only that, but you want him to put you in it because you're too weak to put yourself in there. Ain't that some shit? I'm here to tell you, you're not finna make it to be a butterfly. What you're really doing is starting back at square one, like they say. You know a square got four sides, huh? Everything is symbolic. What you're doing is starting back at square one when you allow somebody else's, uh, when, you, when you willingly go into somebody else's religious system that they created. Hmm? Is, the, is number one, the egg there, is that not a... a, a a uh, construct created by somebody else for your spirit to be housed in? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And so when you see someone come along telling you, I've got the perfect religion, I've experienced this, and I've talked to God, and I've done this, that, and all these other things, why don't you jump in this religion that I've carefully crafted from my experience? I want you to know. That if you fall for the okie doke and go into the religion that they crafted, then what you have just gained yourself is another mother and another father. But you're not progressing. You're actually digressing, backsliding. This only works. If you do it how nature tells you to do it, which is by the power invested in you, by the strength of your own being, and by the materials that you collected, you make your chrysalis. You make your cocoon. And no man can make that cocoon for you. Hmm? 
Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. That's what that means. See, that's what that caterpillar does. He he works out. He spins out his own salvation, his own cross to bear. You understand? Mm -hmm. He finds the tree that he wants to hang from. Mm -hmm. And then he then he willingly gives up his life so that he can take it back up again. Mm -hmm. That's right. And you need to do the same now. If any of y'all are, are familiar with tarot cards, if you know anything about tarot cards, Torah and tarot means light, the light. Hmm? So the first five books of the Bible are the Torah, the light. If you look at tarot cards, you'll notice that the first tarot card is the food card. I want you to know that that corresponds to number one on this picture, the egg, because we all start out as fools, complete jackasses. Hmm? Yes, we do. Complete fools. But I want you to know that there's also uh, uh, another card in the tarot deck that's called the hangman card. Have y'all seen that card where the man is hanging on a tree upside down? You see, people who read tarot cards, tarot cards show the whole evolution of a spirit from beginning as the fool to the end as the magician. See, the magician card symbolizes number four, the adult butterfly. See, you're going from being a fool through the whole circle of life. To becoming a magician. Now, what is a magician? A magician is a god. A god. Hmm? Uh, and, and look, for all my Christian folks listening, I know a lot of hard die Christians listen to me because I do help explain some of the scriptures better. Look, I want to tell you this now. I want to tell you this. Well, I, I can't even remember what I was supposed to tell you. So fuck it. It wasn't meant for you to know. Anyway, continuing on, you go from being a fool all the way to a magician. OK, oh, that, that I remember now. What is a magician but a God? Now, if you think this is not scriptural, what I'm saying, I want you to know that it came out of the mouth of your Messiah, Jesus, according to your scriptures, where he said, didn't I tell you that ye are gods? Mm. It got a ring to it. <laughs> ye are gods. If only you had eyes to see and ears to hear. You understand? Ye are gods. And so the magician card represents the God you. The magician is the one who can manipulate its re his reality. You understand? Manipulate his reality. Now, now that makes you a master manipulator. Being a master manipulator is not a bad thing. We, we call people master manipulators. And normally when we say it, we mean it in a negative uh, way, a negative connotation. But I want you to know that everything has dual meanings here and dual purposes. Anything can be used for good and for bad. Being a master manipulator is not a bad thing. But what are you manipulating people to? Are you manipulating people to see their true potential? Hmm? Or are you manipulating people for your own selfish gains? Hmm? Are you manipulating people into loving themselves? Hmm? Or are you manipulating people into loving you undeservingly? Hmm? You see what I'm saying? And so you become a magician. You begin to learn how to manipulate people's thoughts and people's minds. Nay, even your own thoughts and your own mind. And thereby you begin to manipulate this reality. You become a shaker and a mover in this world. Peace, Marcella. Peace. Yeah. Yeah, angel. Like fire shut up in your bones. I already know. Truth recognize truth and real recognize real. It's a process. I didn't make this up. And it's not just because the Bible said it. I'm showing you according to nature, according to natural life cycles. Look at it. Number one is sleep. Number two is wake. Number three is sleep. Number four is awake. You understand? Up, down, in, out, in, out, in, out. Hmm? So I said all that. Basically, just to say this, don't be afraid of religion. Religion is not the bad guy here. You understand? Religion has its purpose. The rituals have their purpose. Hmm? The icons have their purpose. 
There's a time and a season for all things. And if you're listening to the sound of my voice, I am telling you what time it is. It is time for you to take all of that information, all of that knowledge that you have gained, and all of the wisdom that you have gained within the last few years. And it's time for you to construct yourself a house, a temple, hmm? for you to reside in. Somewhere where you can lay your head and rest. That's right. You can stop searching all over Facebook. Mm -hmm. You can stop all of that. Just build yourself a beautifully constructed religion according to the wisdom and the knowledge that has been revealed to and through you. Hmm? And you go in it willingly. You bind back your own spirituality, your own consciousness willingly. Mm -hmm. I know they told you stay woke. But just like regular life, regular life is just a simple representation of the greater spiritual life. You can't stay woke forever. There are cycles. If you keep staying, if you stay woke day in and day out, eventually you will become delusional. You will lose your fucking mind. Hmm? And so in the same way in the spirit realm, you got to come out of religion, go back in. Come out of religion, go back in. You understand? You got to do that, but it's like a spiral. You go back to where you started, but with a greater understanding. You understand? So you're not in the same religion you was in. You're in a greater religion, a religion founded on better promises, on better rituals. Do you understand? On better icons. Mm-hmm. That's right. Of your own creation. From your own bosom. How you think the caterpillar make his, his, his chrysalis? From his own bosom, not another man's bosom, his bosom. Hmm? And you go in. And you rest your head. And you grow in your religion. You grow in your rituals. You eat while you in there. You understand? You continue on while you in there. Just like the first time. Mm-hmm. But this time, my baby, when you pop out. This time when you pop out, you won't be limited to just the tree. You won't be limited to the surface of consciousness. Do you understand? You will have gained your angel wings, like they say. Hmm? You'd have gained your wings, my baby. And you could fly high in the sky of consciousness. You can go deep within yourself. Because I'm here to tell you that... <coughs> The further you look out in the sky, it's equivalent to looking deeper within yourself. And so the butterfly can go a little bit deeper or a little bit higher than the caterpillar clan. And so, too, when you come out of this newly constructed religion by yourself, you'll be able to go higher in consciousness. Now, understand this. The danger decreases from a, a butterfly to a caterpillar. A caterpillar is generally defenseless. It's sitting out there on a limb like they say. Hmm? You ever been out on a limb? That's not a good place to be. And the caterpillar is usually out there on a limb. And so to you, so to you when you're just in pure spirituality. I'm sure a lot of y'all know folks that done been snatched up by some type of vulture or some shit out here. Uh-huh. Yeah. I know we got some, some folks out here that didn't already got their spiritual wings, but just because they got wings don't mean they butterflies. Grasp what I'm saying. So if you're a caterpillar, be careful out here. They running around wanting to eat you up before you ever can construct your own chrysalis. You understand? Don't let them eat you up. Don't be eaten alive. And so when you feel, when you feel that danger, y'all, when you feel it, you know when it's time. You know when it's time, okay? Just like the caterpillar, there's, an, there's a, a hormone that is secreted inside of the caterpillar, okay, that, that, that begins to slow down its, its want for food. So I, I'm confident that the people that I'm talking to right now, you don't be on Facebook like you used to be. You don't want to listen to all that old extra ass shit like you used to. You find yourself not being as spiritually hungry as you used to be. You understand? Because the time is drawing near for you to go back in the cocoon. Hmm? The time is drawing near for you to lay down your life. For you to find a tree to hang yourself on. The time is drawing near. 
So you're not as hungry as you used to be. Hmm? You used to could stay on Facebook, Instagram, on, on YouTube all day, every day. You was insatiably hungry when you first popped out that egg, wasn't you? Yeah, you was real hungry. Now, let me tell you something else. When you become a butterfly, your food changes. Your diet changes. See, as a caterpillar, you eat leaves from the tree. What does that mean? That means your mind, as a caterpillar minds, only eats uh, 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 the surface level shit. But you see, when you become a butterfly, you eat from the nectar of the flowers. What does that mean? That means you only eat the good. You only want the, the concentrated version. You understand what I'm saying? Hmm? Does this make any sense to you guys? Your diet changes. You're no longer eating bland leaves, but you're eating the beautiful nectar of the flowers. You don't want to fuck with that drama shit no more. You don't care who's doing who and who done said this about this one and that one. That's the leaves. You don't want to mess with that no more. You only want the nectar. Hmm? It's a totally different thing. Totally different diet. And so, too, you could tell the butterflies from the caterpillars by what they're eating, what they like to indulge in, and by what they're eating. I'm not talking about chicken legs versus vegan diet. I'm talking about what your mind is feasting upon. Hmm? What your mind is feasting upon. The caterpillars feast upon something totally different than the butterflies. You understand? And this is a process that everyone has to go through if you want to become a butterfly. You don't have to. And surely a lot of people don't. Most caterpillars never make it to become a butterfly. I must say that again. Most caterpillars do not make it to become a butterfly. Why? Why? Do you know why? Because some being that's already gained its wings swoops down low. And eat you up before you can ever wrap yourself in a religion. Either that or somebody comes along and convinces you that all religion is bad. Hmm? Like they say, all death is bad. I told y'all, death is not the enemy here. Death has a purpose too. They say death is the death is the cousin or sleep is the cousin of death. I'm here to tell you that death is not the cousin of sleep, but death and sleep are one and the same. Hmm? One's just a lesser form and one's a greater form. Hmm? And they're not the bad guy here. See, death corresponds to religion, which corresponds to the cocoon. Hmm? But they serve their purpose. Death and religion and the cocoon are a womb. A womb, just like your mother's womb. If you can't say death is bad, if you don't say the womb is bad too. You can't say religion is bad if you don't admit that the womb is bad too. But if you do then you will be heavily deluding yourself. If you are very observational, if you are critical thinking, then you can see that the womb has a purpose. Sometimes, not sometimes, all the time, when it's time for you to grow, you understand, when it's time for you to enter into another dimension of your being, another realm of thought, you have got to go into the womb to be birthed out. You understand? You cannot pass up the womb. The womb is the tomb. They are no different. The womb is the tomb. Do you understand? They are no different. Death is not the bad guy here. I told you death is just a door to another life. And so too religion is just a door to another spirituality. That's right. The womb is just a door to another 